House Money. Dot media. I was making over two hundred thousand dollars a year, and I was broke because I was spending it. And so I figured out what net worth was, and which is assets minus liabilities. And I realized that on paper I had nothing. So I was like, okay, I got to start doing this stuff. Got to start buying assets. And I was like, okay, real estate. So you're telling me that I can live in one part of a house and rent the other rooms out and live for free. That sounds fun. And that printed out about four thousand dollars of cash flow. And it also allowed me to live for free, which is through house hacking. And because I was able to live for free and I had my expenses covered at the base level, I was able to start focusing on other things that I enjoy doing, building income off of that. And that's where all the fun money comes in. And you pour that on top of the fire. And then all of a sudden you can quit your job, uh, hop on a one way flight like I did in July of this year and travel around the world, which is what I did. So. I live my big, exciting life. If you gave me $100 million today and said, what do you want to do? I would do exactly what I'm doing today. Welcome to Real Estate Maximalist. I'm your host, Alan Corey. I lead the Alan Corey team in Atlanta, Georgia, where we help investors and primary home buyers all day throughout Atlanta find the perfect property. I also have published three books on building wealth and real estate investing. I've been investing for over 22 years, and it started with a $99,000 condo, and I've turned that into a multi-million dollar portfolio. However, I find that it's just easier to say I'm a real estate maximalist. What you just heard was a clip from today's amazing episode with Brian Lubin, a fellow podcast host, a real estate investor, an international traveler. Brian quit his nine to five and put all his energy into learning and building a real estate portfolio. Brian just said, if he was handed $100 million, he would continue doing what he's doing. Can you say that about where you are right now and what you're working on and what you're spending your time on? If not, well, Brian has a lot to teach us. Let's hear how he's been able to live for free and travel the world on a whim. Welcome, Brian Lubin, to Real Estate Maximalist. You are a bit of a jack of all trades, but you're also someone I live vicariously through because you're traveling a lot and i um, excited to hear your story. So thanks for joining us today. Alan, thanks for having me, man. They say uh, jack of all trades, master of none. So I am doing the niching, ladies and gentlemen. The riches are in the niches. So I have tasted the buffet display of investments and business strategies. And now I've finally found my one thing, which we'll get into a little bit later in the episode. But I'm yeah. excited to be on. And guys, we are going to earn every bit of the next 30 to 45 minutes that you listen to us. We're going to just do this for you guys. So I love hope you. Enjoy. You're setting the, the stage right now, rolling out the red carpet. Uh, you're going to learn a lot because I, I know you are because I learn a lot from you just following you on social media and uh, seeing all the moving and shaking that you do. So let's hear about this niche. Let's let's go all in and, and maybe what, what brought you to sort of realizing that sort of a specialty is, is the way to go. Right now, I'm actually moving into like kind of the digital media space and just really focusing on uh, what I'm super passionate about, which is called passionate income. But this was not something that people like start with. Right. So when people are growing up, they, they hear, oh, uh, do what you love and you're never going to work a day in your life. Right. So that makes a lot of sense on paper, but nobody actually gives you like a game plan on how to accomplish that. So we're like, thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Thanks, <laughs> random, random motivational speaker on YouTube. I, I don't understand what the heck that means. So I'm not going to digest that or try to implement that. I'm going to simply ignore that and think that I have to work this stupid job for the rest of my life until I'm 65, which then at that point, I'll be allowed to enjoy the remainder of my life with arthritis and blood clots, right? <laughs> so I, a little bit of my backstory, I was in corporate America. Um, full time, uh, just jet setting, suit and tie, clean shaven guy. And I thought that I was going to do that for the rest of my life. Uh, made it to the top of the company in a B2B enterprise sales role. Uh, realized that I made it to a mountaintop that was the wrong mountain that I was climbing and realized that there needed to be a change. So I needed to plan my escape. And that's what got me into real estate investing. So I'll give you guys my entire story and then Alan and I will break it down and dissect it piece by piece. But eventually that led to uh, four, four, pro four properties, um, four, well, four units so that I have co-living. Uh, so I have multiple tenants in each property and that printed out about $4,000 of cash flow. And it also allowed me to live for free, 
which is through house hacking. And because I was able to live for free and I had my expenses covered at the base level, I was able to start focusing on other things that I enjoy doing, building income off of that. And that's where all the fun money comes in and you pour that on top of the fire. And then all of a sudden you can quit your job, uh, hop on a one-way flight like I did in July of this year and travel around the world, which is what I did. So I uh, went in July 6th. I traveled to Greece. I lived in Greece for a month. I went to Barcelona. I went to um, Budapest, Amsterdam, Portugal. I went all over Europe. I went to Brazil. I danced in samba circles. I drank with locals, uh, got in soccer matches, and it was just an amazing time. Now I'm back in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, planning to go to Singapore for New Year's, and then I'm moving to Austin, Texas. So I live my big, exciting life. If you gave me $100 million today and said, what do you want to do? I would do exactly what I'm doing today. So let's dissect it. I love it, man. So that that's where I'm, I, I said, like, you're a jack of all trades in terms of different real estate strategies. And um, I'm curious, did you get to the top of that peak at, at your day job before you bought your first real estate? Or were you just slowly buying real estate on your way to the top of your, your sales job? In the process, um, because I was buying real estate because I understood that I was making over $200,000 a year and I was broke because I was spending it. And so I figured out what net worth was and which is assets minus liabilities. And I realized that on paper I had nothing. So I was like, okay, I got to start doing this stuff. I got to start buying assets. And I was like, okay, real estate. So you're telling me that I can live in one part of a house and rent the other rooms out and live for free. That sounds fun. I'm in a high rise apartment right now paying $2,000 a month. This makes a lot more sense. So it took me a year to save up that first $25,000 to put as a down payment down 3% for my first house hack back in 2019. And so that's what I did. So it was kind of on the ascent to the top. And then once I made it to the top, um, that's when I had my like come to Jesus moment where I realized I needed to completely exit that corporate job and it just wasn't for me. And at that point, that's when I looked at my VP of sales. I tell people uh, for you guys that are listening that are in your W2 job, Look at your boss's boss. Okay. So that's going to be you in the next three to five years. So is that somebody that you admire, respect, and want to be? Nine times out of 10, the answer is no. And if that's the answer, it's time to plan your escape. So that's when I started planning my escape and getting really aggressive with the strategies. I love this. So on your way up, uh, having some money, I'm broke. Let me invest in real estate, obviously, assets and cash flow. And then it sounds like, once you wanted to make that move, you had that real estate foundation that really opened up the door. And at that time, you didn't know what your passion was, right? No, I think you earn your passion. I think it's foolish to just expect your passion to just kind of knock on your door like Amazon Prime one day delivery and just like hit you in the face. Uh, I think your passion is earned. You earn the right to do what you love. And I think you do that through a multi-step process. So I've got a four-step framework that I created. I tried to recreate how I went about this and was able to do this at 27 years old because I just traveled the world for six months and I was like, this worked. I didn't go broke. All the things that I was afraid of happening didn't happen. So I'm doing something right, but how do I template this out so that other people can follow it? And so far, here's my best stab at that. It's a work in progress, but here we go. We'll give it a shot, people. Yes. But only if you leave Alan a five-star rating and a review on this hey, podcast. You, 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 so well, This praise is going to get you back on, on the you, show over and over again. Yes. If you guys want to hear it, five-star <laughs> rating and a review for Alan. So here's the framework, four steps. Step one, what do you want? Why are you investing in real estate at all? So everyone that's listening, I know that you're in your car, you're heading to work or you're heading from work. And I know exactly what you want. And it's going to irritate you how well I know exactly what you want. You want $10,000 a month of passive income. <laughs> everyone wants $10,000 a month of passive income. That's like the number yeah. for everyone. Yes. Um, just randomly, arbitrarily made up. Like that's your number. It's good life. And yeah, but like, what does your life look like if you have $10,000 of passive income? Like, what are you doing? When you wake up in the morning, what does that look like? What are you doing with your time? What are you doing in the afternoon? Uh, what does your relationship look like? Where are you living? What is your activities and your hobbies look like? What kind of big, exciting life is the one that you're living? So when you ask people what they want, 99.997% of people can't tell you what they want. And this applies to people that are making a million dollars passive because I'm friends with them. Okay. So the number one step, step one of the formula is figure out what your life looks like in three years from now. 
Okay. So you're going to write down in present tense, like you're living it today. I woke up this morning and this is what my life looked like. Like, this is what my business looks like. This is what my real estate looks like. And you're going to write it three years in the future. And that's called your vivid vision. It's a book by Cameron Harold. I also had an episode with him on my podcast as well. So it's an amazing book. Takes you about a couple hours to read. I would highly recommend it. Once you have your vision set, then you can start to bake things into your life and make decisions within the parameters of this vision and this life that you're trying to create. So this is the most important key that nobody does. They just blindly invest in real estate for their freedom. But I'm here to tell you as somebody that's been free already, I lived in Greece for a month. I lived on the beach. After two weeks, you are hungover and sunburned. You need to do something. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, The Secret that... Sort yeah, of, yeah, Rhonda Patrick, or yeah, yeah, it's it's very similar to Vivid Vision that you yeah. you mentioned, um, and I, I just want to jump in and say I believe this uh, as well. Uh, and it, looking back on what sort of led me to reaching some of my goals, this was before I I knew this is what I was doing. I just had uh, I, I want to be a millionaire by thirty, like mm-hmm. as shallow as it was. That's what I wanted to be, and that's all. I, all every minute of my day, I woke up. Is this decision is buying this toothpaste or that toothpaste? Which one is going to make be closer to being a millionaire by thirty? Okay, I'll get the cheaper one. Will you know taking this job or that job make me more money? Is it going to get me closer? And, and that was that's that was it was just like it was a robot. It was just which one is going to get me to? I, it was a vivid vision. It was sort of put it out in the universe. My secret. This is what I'm going to do is be a millionaire by thirty. And uh, I realized I, I, I was able to achieve my goal there. It didn't feel like overwhelming. It didn't feel like an obstacle. It was just like, this is the path I'm on. It's very important to me. I don't know why this is important to me, but it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and now I always sort of, like you said, it, it's like, to me, it's that three to four year vision. Every goal, it, it's never, what can I do in three months? It's never, what can I do uh, in, in three days? It's What can I accomplish in three years or four years? And once I sort of have that laser focus and I can actually visualize myself, like, is that the person doing, can I be that person? What is that? What do I look like? What am I going to be wearing? Who are going to be my friends? Uh, And and it just makes life easier and goal setting sort of uh, just baby steps and incremental. Is that sort of how you see it as well? Yeah, and I want to expand on that for a little bit. For, but for people listening that are maybe in their first property or looking to buy their first property or their fifth property, and you're like, okay, Alan and Brian, whatever, tell me how to buy the property. How did Brian get the cash flow, right? Guys, I'm going to give you some tough love. It is ridiculously simple. It is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. It's a documented process that millions of people have done. We'll tell you how to do it, and it'll take you about one to two minutes for us to tell you how to do it. It's very simple. This is the difficult part that we're talking about right here. So what messes people up. Yeah. So a key expansion on what you said, uh, the difference between the book The Secret, which is like vision boards, visualization, affirmations, like planning your destiny and all this stuff, and Vivid Vision is that The Secret is for personal use, and the Vivid Vision is for external use, public use. So the secret, it's like making that vision board where you're taking magazine cutouts and you're like, okay, this is what I want my house to look like. And you've got all these different pieces on your board. But the only problem is that other people can't interpret what you mean by your vision board. So that's for you personally, each and every day, just to activate like what you're doing and what you're focusing on. The vivid vision is to allow other people to read it and for other people to say, oh, I want in on this. I want to help with this. And so for my new business and my new company, I've got a three-year vivid vision. I posted on Facebook. I had 30 messages from people that are like, I want in on this because they can see how they can fit in to my vision. And they see it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like you're building a house. It's like having an architect hand in like them, like the floor plan and like the whole drawing of the house. So like, that's what's, that's what's so insane about it. And that's what's super fun. All right, I want to rebrand this for you. Number one is the Lubin Lens, guys. You named it. <laughs> the Lubin Lens. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, but now let's get to step two, which is what you guys are more f- familiar with, which is the financial foundation. So I want everyone to view this almost like a skyscraper that you're building. So the higher the skyscraper, the more strong and steadfast your foundation needs to be to support it. So if you want to build a really cool freaking life, you need to have a really strong freaking fin- financial foundation. And this is where this podcast comes in, in my podcast. It's the unsexy stuff. 
it's the stuff that you don't need to be passionate about. You don't need to be passionate about flipping houses, buying laundromats, cash flow businesses, building Airbnbs, construction. You don't need to be passionate about it. But what it earns is the right to have your time free so that you can figure out what your thing is. So that is the number one thing is the financial foundation. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out what is your income, what are your expenses, and you're going to figure out how much money do you need coming in baseline to cover your current monthly expenses. And everyone just arbitrarily says $10,000, but I did it on like $4,000. All right. So it's possible you just actually have to look at your expenses and say, once I hit this, I'm technically covered, right? And so that's what your next mad dash is, is how many rental properties, how many Airbnbs, how much uh, multifamilies, mobile home parks, whatever have you, uh, do I need to buy to get this money coming into me without my time being attached to it, okay? So then once that happens, then you're able to start moving up the ladder to step three and step four, which are more abstract. So step three is now your, your head is out of the clouds, your plane took off from the runway, and you're going through that first layer of clouds and turbulence. You're coming out the sky, and you're seeing clearly now, and you've got your time back, and you're not worried about paying the water bill. You're not worried about paying the uh, different bills and rent and mortgage and all that's covered. So now you're going to spend all of your excess money on coaches, community, mastermind, courses, and building up your skill set in your community of people that are where you want to be or people that are on the journey with you. And this is where all your time, energy, effort, and money is going to go towards is this, because that's the greatest and fastest accelerant to success that you're ever going to have. And then at step four, step four, you have your financial foundation. You have a crystal clear vision. You have an entire peer group and community that's around you, supporting you of mentors, partners, and peers. And now you bring with people that are in your community and now you have real estate and now you have a community and then that's where you all uh, feed off of each other. And then the compound effect comes into place. And all of a sudden, in two or three years, you've accomplished what most people can't do in 65. Where does your passion, finding your passion, is this discovered along this path too? So that's where it comes in. So there's a couple of different levels of freedom, right? So people talk about financial freedom, but that's only the first level of freedom. So financial freedom is step one. And then that's where your passive income, your investments pay your expenses. So now your time's no longer attached to money and you're good. Like you don't have to work that crappy job anymore. And then the second round of freedom is called personal freedom. So personal freedom is going to be where now you not only have control of your uh, finances, but you have control of your time. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, and I know that you know this too, Alan, we leave our W-2s and we start working on our thing. And now all of a sudden we've we've magically left a 40 hour a week job for a 90 hour a week job, <laughs> but we right. own it. Yeah. So we don't have control of our time. So that's personal freedom is doing what you want, when you want, with who you want. And then that's where you really start having full control of your calendar. Then once you have full control of your calendar, full control of your finance, then you move into the third level, which is philosophical freedom, which is now you have ample free time and blank space in your calendar, literally allotted to think big picture on things. So what kind of legacy do I want to leave? Like what fulfillment do I have in my life? And how can I achieve more of this? How can I add more of this? What type of legacy am I leaving for my kids and my future kids? What impact do I want to leave on the world? So got like, kind of like those internal woo woo questions, right? So once you kind of get past that financial freedom point, and then you start having an end of personal freedom to where you have a lot more free time to sit and get still and quiet and actually pay attention to what your life is, then that's when you start finding like and tinkering and finding what your thing is. So for me, that's podcasting. So that goes into what I'm doing after this. We could talk about how I built the financial foundation, but my new thing is podcasting. I'm all in on my podcast. That's all I do every day. It's what I want to focus on is growing that to a million downloads a month and building my entire business and community around that. So that's my one thing. I love this. And I think people listening, they sure podcasting might not be your one thing, but it's built on this foundation of real estate. So mm -hmm. let's dig a little bit deeper into how you built it you, the house hacking, the co-sharing, because that's that seems like a lot of work and and difficult to do. But I, I'd love, nope. like you said, it's it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. So, uh, can you kind of walk me through sort of your investing strategy on on, on your co-living situation and how that operates? 
completely forgot how to do it. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. So it's it's the simplest way that you can do it, guys. Like, I literally did this the easiest way that you could possibly do it. So don't tell me it's difficult for people listening. It's very easy. All you do is you go buy a conventional property, like you're buying a house. 3% down, owner-occupant loan. I didn't even do FHA. Now, I know interest rates are high right now. And I bought mine with lower interest rates, but this will still work if you apply the strategies I'm talking about. So I did what's called house hacking. You live in one part of the house, you rent the other parts out. People try to do this in duplexes, right? Or triplexes or quads. But that's very difficult to find in a lot of major markets because it's either going to be out in the boonies or you're going to have like a duplex in the smack dab in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia, that's $2 million. Doesn't work. So what I do is I do what's called a luxury house hack. So I buy in adjacent, uh, growing neighborhoods. So for me in, in Georgia, it's at, uh, Marietta and Woodstock. I buy five bed, four bathroom houses, split level, two floors, uh, 1970s to 1980s construction to where they have an in-law suite and they have two kitchens. So I buy my properties off the MLS, multiple listing service. Very easy. And because most people now don't need two kitchens, why would you have two kitchens? But to build a new kitchen for a house hack, it's $20,000. So you don't want to do that. Because we want to have as low of a uh, down payment as possible so that your cash on cash is higher. So what I did is I put the 3% down. I buy the split level, uh, five bed, four bath houses. So my houses are three bed, two bath in the upstairs. And there are two, uh, two bed, one bath in the downstairs with another kitchen. Separate entrances. I don't care about it being separately metered, right? So what I do is I live in the downstairs. I live in one part. I rent the other part out. And I rent the upstairs uh, conventionally. So the upstairs is rented as a three, two, and then downstairs, I'll usually have a roommate down with me in the basement. So conventionally means long-term rental, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, some, some are, yeah, some are long-term. Um, no, they're all long-term because I haven't even, t I've only turned one tenant since I've done this in three years. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so downstairs is where, where you live. Um, it's you, you basically have a roommate situation and then when you're traveling are you renting out your room in your absence or how, how bingo you, yeah bingo so um yes i rented out the room in my absence and then also just for peace of mind sometimes i'll just leave it vacant just so i can have something to come back to like i'm about to do a mini move to austin texas for three months i may just leave this vacant and then just come back now another alternative to that is I could do an Airbnb arbitrage play because once you get your like kind of financial and personal freedom, uh, time becomes a huge factor into your investing decisions. And so for me to fully manage an Airbnb, um, and the down part of my uh, house hack that I currently live in and I'm filming this from right now would be a lot of time, energy, and effort that I don't want to divert. So what I would do and what I'm open to thinking about is maybe doing an Airbnb arbitrage play on the reverse end. To where somebody else that does airbnbs can come in and use their profile with mine and then they don't have like i cover the expenses and then give them a percent percentage of the profit and then they can help me stage it they can help me do the renovations and stuff to it and then they run the airbnb and i make a percentage of it so that would be something i'd be open to okay so i like the strategy the reverse arbitrage but so let's walk through this so as a landlord are you you're saying like i could rent this out and make thousand dollars a month as a long-term rental or roommate situation or i could probably rent it to someone who manages and does airbnb full-time for twelve hundred dollars a month and that person would be interested to re to renting it for higher because they can make two thousand dollars a month is that sort of your thought process there yeah essentially and the only reason i would do the airbnb is if it was substantially more and also just for my own benefit because of my own flexibility so that I wouldn't have to remove all my furniture. I wouldn't have to do all these upgrades. I wouldn't have to have all my stuff in a storage unit. I got I have a full, I could have a fully furnished unit. And then if I'm traveling around and I decide I don't want to live there anymore and I want to hunker down, like if it's the recession, I'm like, okay, I really need to hunker down and live for free again, that I can come back to it. That's the only reason I would do it. Otherwise okay. I'll do it long-term. Okay. So, so then it's a different situation with Airbnb. You, you would just be splitting profits. Is that what you're thinking? I would just yeah. split profit. Yeah. So that's that's the whole, like, there's just, it's all about um, different strategies. Every single investment decision that you need to make, you need to think, like, how profitable is this going to be, but also how much time invested is this going to take? Because true profit is revenue minus expenses minus headaches.
So it's just like, and also when it took, like I could raise my rent right now, like probably 30%, but the headache that it takes for me to turn a tenant, I could easily um, have some of my older units turned and probably have somebody paying $600 more a month for one of those. But then people don't think about all the time and effort it takes. For, what renovations do I need to do up there? I, right. I, do I need to put new fresh coat of paint up there? Do I need to like go like, like there's a bunch of stuff that goes into it. And while I can get a new tenant fast, my tenants right now pay me like on time. They're amazing tenants. They take care of the property. It's not a headache for me. So that's what we're talking about when it comes to passive income, like pay attention to it. So what what is the headache factor right now when you're traveling across the country and you've got, you know, rental income across four different properties coming in? How do you manage that? There is no headache. Like, you, have, you have software, you have property managers. You, is it managed through software? Yeah. So I have property. I mean, it's not that difficult. Like, um, like I've got a property manager that handles, handles them. And then also it's just like they're long-term tenants and they're paying below market rate for rent. And they're just B class, blue collar people that are like hardworking people that just want an honest place to live for a fair price. And then they, so when they find that they latch onto it and they're like, Oh my God, I want to take care of this. So yeah. And they I want stability. Have... And if you're keeping it below market, they're, they're going to stay forever. Yeah. Yeah. Get... And then the people that are downstairs, I've got a college friend, call it old college friend that lives downstairs in my other unit. Um, so that one has been rented out and he's been living there for years. And I used to have my girlfriend in this one. And then she was paying me a little bit of rent too to live over here. So now she, she's moved out and I'm over here uh, just by myself, but it's just like, Okay, like now I'm still living for free, and yeah. my cash flow from upstairs is still covering and giving me profit. So it's super fun. Yeah, no, this is great, and and I I like your your approach is set it up like you said, you know, get get it so till it is simple, and then value your time, and then now all your decision making is what makes me the most profit minus the headaches. I, I I love that. Yeah, exactly. Because you get you go through different stages, right? So it's like in the beginning, like you have to like hustle, hustle, hustle. And that's all you're doing. Like you, you don't, your time isn't worth anything yet. Yeah. And that's okay. Like you have to earn your time being worth something. But now it's just like, for me, I'm so anal about my time that I'm like, I'm only going to do the highest dollar productive activities that I have that's in my business and my real estate. And then everything else gets delegated and, or automated because if you don't do that from the very beginning, it's the same thing as charitable contribution. If you don't give $10 out of a hundred, you're not going to give a hundred thousand out of a million. I, th I want to keep sort of focusing on the, the effort because a lot of the negative comments I see, at least uh, on one of my Twitter posts are, Oh, you know, real estate's not passive. Real estate's not passive. And I, I think hmm. it's not passive when you start, but it's, completely passive for me now. Like it's all property management. I don't even know the names of my tenants. It's completely passive. Uh, and it's, I don't understand why people think it can't be passive. Cause I, I, I think there's the baby steps you have to take, like where you have to self-manage it. you got to find your first tenant. You got to write, work, work out the first lease. Uh, but you don't have to do those baby steps, but I know it makes people more comfortable. Did you go straight away to property management or did you step in and, and try to do it yourself? I did it myself and it was barely any effort. Yeah. So it's just like, so there's a couple of cheat codes to this. So first off, like for people that complain about that, which I don't think that people that are listening to this would be the ones that are complaining, but there's just like de varying degrees of control. So like in your W-2, you're working 40, 50 hours a week, no matter what, no matter how good you are, like you're still working. So in entrepreneurship and real estate, it's directly dependent on how good your skills and systems are. So it's like, if you want to be more passive, that's good. Just be better. Like <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. get better, if you get better, then you're going to be more passive. And so obviously there are strategies that are more time intensive than others, but it's just like, I had I joined all these communities and with people that are making, you know, that are 10 times where I'm at. And they're just like, oh, just do it like this. Like, use this lease. Like, here's this property, like software. Like, here's who I recommend to manage them for you in Atlanta. And so it's just like, it's, it's very simple. Now, problems still happen. I'm not acting like problems don't happen. I've had both properties flood. One was from a washing machine hose coming un unglued from uh, coming out of the wall. And the other one was from a water heater leaking. So I had full gut rehabs of both my downstairs. I have a tree down in my, one of my properties that completely destroyed the back fence. 
things happen all the time. But here's what people don't understand is like, I have no emotional reaction to that because that's just business. Like that just happens. So people are like, Oh, it's not passive income. You're having to take care of a tree being down. No, I get a text that says, Hey, trees down. I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. How much to fix? Get a couple quotes, go fix it. And yeah. then you just write the check because when you're doing your underwriting, people, people overestimate like the amount that of profit that they're making. But like when you're conservative with your underwriting, then you have those reserves in place to where it's not even your money. It's the, the reserves are taking care of it. Yeah. So like that's the game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, recently I had um, a property manager send me a photo that says, hey, this a unit in an apartment caught on fire. Yeah. And, and it was like, <laughs> OK, like, I showed it to my kids. My, my kids thought it was really cool. Like no one was hurt or anything. Uh, and it's like, <laughs> all right, well. Thanks for the heads up. And and then like a week later, it was all fixed and put back together. I had nothing to do with it. That's that's why I hired the property manager to, to deal with it and, yeah. you know, take care of the tenants and make sure they're all you know, like it was, well, okay, that happened. Then I got through it and I didn't have to rush over there or do anything. You know, that was, that, that's what but, people think. But yeah an, important, this, yeah. an important caveat to this though, is like the lower class that you go for your higher profit or your higher cash on cash returns, people, uh, the more headaches you're going to have. Yeah. So if you're doing C class, D class, you're flipping properties out in the hood, like you're going to have bullet holes, you're going to have prom tenants, you're going to have robberies. Like, I don't do none of that crap, man. I'm B class all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell people that, like, you're going to make more money because you have more headaches and that the, the return scale is, you know, really a proportional. Headache. Yeah, proportional. Right. The A class properties, luxury properties with, with high end tenants. Yeah, they're they're not going to cause a lot of problems, but you're not going to make a lot of money on those, and vice versa on the other side. Same sides. thing applies. Same exact thing applies to business. So people try to create these like little baby businesses that solve small problems, and then they have problems charging for them a lot of money because you're not solving a big enough problem. Yeah, yeah. So like right now, I'm in the process of building my community that helps people leave their jobs. So it's like that's a huge problem. So I can yeah. charge money for it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, well, tell us about this community in case people want to join. Yeah. So uh, right now we're about to launch it. So I like everything I do is business now. And like, so once you get big enough in real estate now, and you know this, like you can be an investor in real estate and make a bunch of money and maybe make it to like seven figures. But if you want to build like an empire and build legacy, you can't be an investor. You need to be a businessman or a businesswoman. Like you need to run an operation. You need to grow a team. Like this is how you do it. You have to evolve in, into that. So for me right now with this community, what I did was most people will build like an online course. People will build an online community and they'll spend months and months and months and months on the website and domain and building out modules and stuff. And they'll release it to the public at a price point and they'll say, here's my thing. Here's my business. Here's my service. Um, here you go. And then they just wing it. And they're like, I hope people buy this. I hope I got it right. So that's not the correct way to do it. And that's how most people do it. The best way to do it is, called what, is create what's called an MVP, minimal, minimum viable product. And that includes uh, with service-based businesses too, to where what you want to do is you want to have a select handful of people that are doing your service and product um, under the table. You know, you give them a discount. You say, hey, I'm, this is a work in progress. I need your help to build this thing. Give me feedback. Tell me what works, what doesn't work, what you would improve, what things irritate you. How can I make the flow better? And then you do it like that. So that's what my community has been for the last six weeks that people don't even know about. So I've got like a hundred people in this community that are paying members and have like, no one knows it exists. So that's I guess what... now people know it exists. So it's a action Academy community. And what we're doing uh, well, the action Academy is we help people leave that W2 job and figure out how to build passive income so that it can build passionate income. So it's a community of people that we're talking about different asset classes, real estate, cash flow businesses, um, different ways of uh, acquiring them, multifamily, uh, everything, as long with the mindset and the vision work. So we all are kind of in the collective mission and goal together of leaving our jobs. And then when you leave the job, um, support afterwards. Because uh, did you work a corporate job, Alan? I did. Yeah. Yeah. For 15 years. Uh, I, I retired twice through real estate. I, I retired and I wasn't passionate about anything, got bored to death. So I was like, I guess I'll go back to work. And then, yes. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. So I had a couple panic attacks after I quit. Yeah. I don't know how that process was for you, but like I left my job and I was just like, who the hell am I? Mm -hmm. I was just like, dude, who is this guy? 
Like, I don't have anything to do now. I'm just sitting here. And so people need help figuring out like who the heck they are and how to schedule their, uh, how to organize their schedule. How do you organize your calendar? How do you figure out what your dollar productive activities are? Like you need that support system for when you leave the job in that transition period between shifting your identity from that of a W2 employee to an entrepreneur. So it's like going from like a entrepreneur to an entrepreneur and it's, it's difficult. So, so are, are you teaching people to invest in real estate as their exit plan or invest in businesses or whatever they're interested in? Yeah, both, both. And so I think that both are pretty complementary skill sets um, and they're adjacent. So what we talk about is like the varying degrees and marriages between real estate and business. So like self storage, for instance, is like the perfect marriage between the two because it's real estate and it's business. So what I'm trying to help people do is get exposure, almost like you're going through that buffet and you're trying the Chinese chicken, you're trying the barbecue and you're like, okay, I'm testing out these different asset classes. And then you figure out which ones really resonate with you. And then you pick your one thing and you go deep on that one thing. Because when I was starting out, and I don't don't know if this was like this for you or for people listening, I was so overwhelmed with information, like through bigger pockets and through everything that I just didn't know like where to go. It's just shiny object syndrome 24 seven. So if you do the vision work and you do all the mindset work and you figure out like what type of life you want to build and what your interests are and what your strengths are, then once you do all that work as to the ground floor, then it's very easy or it's easier to figure out what your assets are or what asset class you want to focus on, because then you start building bumpers to say no to things. I I, I love this. And that's, that's like that, that, sort of millionaire yes no decision tree yeah like like, because a lot of of people are like hey i've got this airbnb and i've got this duplex and i've got this condo and it's like well you're you're distracted like focus on one and you're going to know what the best airbnb is or the best condo or the best multifamily but only look at a very narrow focus and you're that you're going to own that niche and a lot of times you your niche finds you like yes through action yeah 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 like a neighbor so just, or an investor will say, I've got this property. I don't know what to do with it. And so you, you buy it and you're like, I, I guess I'm the, uh, the house flipper now or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and it's just like, pay attention. Like it's all just a giant game to get into your zone of genius. So like you keep going and you keep going until you find your zone of genius. So for me to find podcasting, ironically on the back end of all of this. And like we said, this isn't a podcast podcast. It's a real mm-hmm. estate podcast. But for me to do this, I had to do the house hacks. I had to do laundromats. I had to try like multifamily. I had to try flipping, wholesaling. Like I was trying everything. And then I picked up a microphone and I was just like, holy crap, this is so much fun. Yeah. And then I built yeah. a business on the back end. So that's what's fun about it. And you can plug and play anything into that. I just did podcasting, but you guys could do anything. If you want to be a candle maker in Colorado, build a rental portfolio that gets you out of your uh, insurance job. And go sling them candles, baby. <laughs> <laughs> then make a podcast about it if you want, because you love it so much. Like I think that's where you and I are. Like I love talking about real estate, so I make a yeah. podcast. This is not a b- business venture; it's just enjoyable for me, and and, and it's fun. Know, yeah, it's fun. And if it turns into a business, great. And I, that your passion comes through on, on your show on the Action Academy as well. Share with us how people can follow you, how they can listen to your podcasts, and um, you know, follow and maybe exit their nine to five with the Action Academy. Absolutely. So uh, you can't find me anywhere, guys. It's a secret. It's a passcode. <laughs> no, I'm everywhere, man. Um, so I'm like on all the social medias. I won't even share those because you'll find them through my podcast, The Action Academy. I do five episodes a week. I interview seven to nine figure entrepreneurs. Uh, well, actually 10 figure now because I had a couple billionaires on. Um, so that's what I do is I interview the financially free and I dissect how they did it with their mindsets, methods and actionable steps. So that's five days a week. That's where I recommend people go. It's on it. Apple podcasts, uh, Spotify, any player that you have. Um, I won't even direct you guys to my community. I would prefer it actually, if you went and listened to the show and see if that resonates with you. And then once you listen to a couple of episodes, there's links in my show that you can go through to book a call and find out to apply for the community. So I would go about it like that. So that way, you know, it's a hell yes. If it's not a (laughs) hell yes, it's a no. Yeah. Yeah. No, Uh, you need to be passionate about changing your life and uh, you'll, you'll help them on that path. Thanks for Brian Lubin for coming out today. I want to remind everyone that creating success has a lot to do with mindset. We talk a lot about that today and how to make deals happen, knowing when investment property is right for you, how to invest with other people's money. But as mentioned earlier, mindset and how to spend your time is key. 
you know, who are you spending your time with? Who's your inner circle? Who are you learning from? Are you following the right people on social media? Are you in the mastermind groups of people wanting to achieve the same thing you want to achieve? And are you doing ongoing outreach? These are actionable steps you can take right now. And you can make a huge difference in your life. Be sure to follow me on social media at Real Estate Maxi and feel free to ask me any questions you may have. Join the Real Estate Maximalist newsletter. Go to realestatemaxi.com. The newsletter is where I will send you weekly actionable steps and information that you need to know today. And if you could, please take a moment, share this wonderful podcast because Brian was great. Share this podcast with your friends and also leave me a podcast review. I would love it if you take a screenshot, tag me on social media, I'll share it and tell everyone in the world how awesome you are for leaving me an accurate and hopefully nice podcast review. Thanks again for tuning in to Real Estate Maximalist. I'm your host, Alan Corey, and I'll see you next week. 